why hello there everybody hope you're doing well it is currently 7 47 on may the 12th at the time of this recording yesterday when i recorded the first video i know i haven't posted it yet it's going to go up today before i post this one but um we covered some videos or a video as to why diversity in movies and representation in movies is so important of course, PBS using teens as a way to get their propaganda across. Now, we're going to do the same thing, but with variety and actual actors. So this will be fun. This will be enjoyable. <laughs> um, but as usual, I have not seen this video at all, period, outside of the title and the thumbnail. And like two seconds worth of it. So let's get right into it. Oh, and uh, yeah. It is, it's pretty bright today. We talk Let's about go. this all the time. She's mm -hmm. like, her show was living single, mine's was girlfriends, yeah. and yeah. You shut the fuck oh, up. Sorry. You shut the fuck up. You shut the fuck up. You shut the fuck up. For some reason, I related so heavily to Gimli in Lord of the Rings that like, he was this like short sort of angry, but he was still like getting it. <laughs> Nobody tosses a dwarf. And th there's like a couple references to them being like a little genderless where they're like, the ladies have beards too. And I was like, that's me. You want to be a bearded lady? Hmm. Hey. They're often mistaken for dwarf men. It's the beards. Okay, two things. One, you know that was a joke, right? That was a joke. Two. Just because they have beards does not make them genderless. It just means they have a little bit more testosterone than the average person. But it does not make them genderless. <sighs> this non-binary crap is going to be the death of us all. I want to say Raven Simone from That's mm. So Raven. <sighs> I was like every other kid in the early 2000s watching Disney Channel and all of my shows, like I loved Hannah Montana, I loved Zack and Cody, Kim Possible, but no one really looked like me. Okay, so if you liked Hannah Montana, you liked Zack and Cody, you liked Kim Possible, if you liked all those shows, why did it matter if they looked like you? I I'm gonna keep asking this question. If you liked the show, if you connected with the show, like I said in my previous video, why does it matter if the person looks like you? Because then you're just looking at the superficial and not what the character is like on the inside. Because I didn't even care that Raven Baxter was black. I just cared that it was a good show and it was fun. But you seem to be shallow here. See, I'm not really too worried about taking stabs at actors. The, the, the last video I was trying to be a little bit more sensitive, but... I'm not really too worried about this one. That was my first. Really? You're telling me that you've never turned on the TV, never looked at Nick at Night and watched shows. This is gonna sound bad. I don't like the person. He's a horrible person, but it still doesn't stop the show from being good. You're telling me you didn't watch the, the Cosby show. You didn't watch all those other kick butt TV shows like the Jeffersons. From from the from the eighties and the seventies, you're telling me you didn't watch those shows? Uh, really, I find that really hard to believe because I watched those shows and I enjoyed those shows. It was fun. And again, I didn't watch them because of their race. But I'm just saying, if you're looking at the superficial, you're telling me you never watched TV Land in your life when you were growing up as a kid. Because I find that really hard to believe. For me, besides Mindy Lahiri on the Mindy Project, what else is there? Now, I know in my last video, I got the wrong Indian from the list. I meant to look up India, and I actually found Native American. Um, so that was my mistake. But as you can see right here, I'm scrolling through a whole list of 126 actors from the country of India. 126. You know, like I said before... You can you can find what you're looking for if you really, really look hard for it or just type in a simple Google search, such as famous actors from India. 
Oh, right, yes, Princess Jasmine. Princess Jasmine. I was yes. gonna say Mulan. <laughs> Mulan from Disney. I was just like, yes. Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee, Jet Li, all those awesome people. Oh, wait, they're dudes, so that's why it's not the same. In an interesting way for me, I, I kind of gravitated towards the Disney cartoons and more more just thematically, I grew up with a single mom. So a lot of the themes that those earlier cartoons, at least the ones in the 90s dealt with were loss of a parent and kind of dealing with that and trying to meet expectations of these usually lofty parents that were in these fairy tales. So I was able to kind of use that as a frame of reference of kind of just how to guide myself in the right direction. Okay, now this is probably one of the only times that I'll agree with them could could agree with some other stuff but this is actually one that makes sense you i don't know what it's like personally to grow up with a single parent i was adopted into a fantastic family but i can kind of understand as a kid you're not really sure how to guide yourself you're not sure which way to go how to put things into perspective and you don't necessarily know how to um, go through life and so we do look at cartoons for an answer we do look at stuff like that for an answer because that's how we as kids can put things into reality for us and so I can understand and completely get behind looking towards the Lion King and, and, and shows such as that to figure out how in the world you're going to deal with this when you're growing up as a kid in a single parent in a single parent home when most of your friends probably have two and so it wasn't necessarily a specific movie with a real actor. It was it was those things that were catered to children that still had really heavy themes. For me, it's got to be Hermione from Harry Potter. Ooh. First of all, I'm obsessed with magic and Harry yeah. Potter. Patrificus Totalis. When she was all young and frizzy haired and magical and nerdy, I saw her and was like, I'm like that. And I would go home and like practice my English accent. Okay, we're two for two outside of the obsessed with magic part because I think that's a little weird. Um, this is a person who didn't say she liked Hermione because of her color or her skin tone or anything like that. She picked out, you know, normal things to actually like a character for, like their personality or their 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 demeanor or whether they're nerdy or not. You know, normal things that normal people such as myself look at. She wasn't looking at the skin color. She wasn't looking at the skin tone or, 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 or superficial stuff like her sexuality. It was just the fact that she was a nerdy character who had this quirk about her and she she latched onto it and liked it. Okay, fair play to Variety. They put two things on here that I agree with. Sen, after Hermione Granger. <laughs> um, so that's probably the first time that I felt represented. Are you sure that's a real spell? Well, it's not very good, is it? Okay, so fair play to Variety for just, you know, kind of whittling in two things that I can actually agree with. Um, on that front, I do appreciate that not every video has to be me bagging on them, but let's face it, looking at superficial things like skin tone, whether or not the person's disabled, you know, what their sexuality is, those things, they shouldn't matter. At least not to the massive extent that people make them out to be. They can matter some and they can, they can really, you can really latch onto that, that some, if it means something to you, fine. But the fact that you need that representation, the, the whole point of me is that I'm the type of person who's like, I don't need this representation. It's cool if it's there, but I'm not going to demand that Hollywood cater specifically to my needs um, for me to be entertained. That's just not how things work. Um, so yeah, fair play to Variety for that last little bit on that video. Much better than PBS's. Now we're going to end this with um, something that's a little that that that's more propaganda, like way more propaganda, and they're using an even younger child this time. Oh, goody! Let's get into the let's do, let's just get into this video, okay? Let's just get into it. Hi, I'm Michael Velasquez, and this is my son Cade. I'm one of the producers of the Asian American Kung Fu film, The Paper Tigers, here to tell you why representation of movies is so important. Hmm. Yes, this dude is using his five-year-old son as a prop to talk about representation in movies. That's, that's just poor parenting right there. 
using your kid as a prop because we all know what it means. It, it's the whole. I predict this is the last we'll be hearing about prohibition. We want prohibition. We, we want prohibition. You can't seriously want to ban alcohol. It tastes great, makes women appear more attractive, and makes a person virtually invulnerable to criticism. <laughs> Won't somebody please think of the children? Narrative that we've all come to know and love so well. <sighs> During the very soul-crushing process of trying to find money for our film, it's unacceptable how many potential investors asked us to make more of our lead characters white. Might as well be telling my beautiful son here that he's not good enough. And there we go. There we go. The obligatory, you might as well tell my son he's not good enough line. It happens whenever they use their kid as a prop. It's to feed on the emotions of people. It's disgusting parenting. And it's manipulative. Go ahead. Tell him. Go ahead, you cold, heartless jerks. Tell my son that I'm totally not using for a prop to get funding for my TV show. That he's not good enough. That he's a horrible individual. And that you just don't want to see him happy. Go ahead and say it, you sick sons of guns. It'd be like doing this. It'd be like taking a Star Wars toy away from him and giving him a Spider-Man toy. What? The Paper Tigers will be a mainstream kung fu film that portrays people of color without falling back on the racist stereotypes of the martial arts genre. Yep, these people are shameless. You know, he could have easily, easily made this video without using his five-year-old, but we gotta play on the feelings. The five-year-old doesn't know what the heck's going on. He just knows that he's in a video and his daddy's playing with him. This is a horrible way to parent. Mm, this is this is disgusting parenting and the racist stereotypes of the martial arts genre. Have you seen the old Bruce Lee movies? Have you seen the old Bruce Lee? The only time we ever see racist stereotypes are in comedy movies where that's prevalent in everything. You see black stereotypes, Asian stereotypes, you see white stereotypes in those movies. But actual serious kung fu films, like the ones from Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee's time, where are you seeing racist stereotypes? I don't know. I don't know what these people. Our film's characters are just regular folks who happen to do kung fu, which to so many of us growing up was as common as skateboarding, break dancing, or starting a garage band. It's not a stretch to say that if the last few generations of kids hadn't been raised on images of white heroes killing black, yellow, and brown villains, then we'd be living in a profoundly different world today. What kind of movies are you showing your children? What kind of movies are you showing your five-year-old kids? Really? Oh, gosh. Most people don't show their kids those types of films, dude. They don't. Because most parents have the foresight and the knowledge to be like, hey, this movie with massive amounts of blood and massive amounts of killing is not necessarily good for my five-year-old child to be watching. And if you don't have the foresight as a parent to teach your kid when he's of age that this is fiction, not reality, and you don't do this stuff, then that says a lot about you as a parent and not the movie industry. Parents are supposed to teach their kids what's real and what's fiction and what's right and what's wrong. We need to stop living in a world where we let our TVs, iPads, and tablets do the parenting for us. But that wouldn't be easy or, or beneficial to the parent, would it? Wouldn't make life easier for you. No, but that's what being a parent is about. So ask yourself, who do you want your kids' heroes to be? These guys? Or these guys? Oh, and there's the racism. Who do you want your kids' heroes to be? White man who kills people. Or a black man who kills people. Asian man who kills people. Oh, we got to think about the skin color of the people who are killing us, don't we? Didn't you just get done saying, like, four seconds ago? 
It's not a stretch to say that if the last few generations of kids hadn't been raised on images of white heroes killing black, yellow, and brown villains, then we'd be living in a profoundly different world today. So it would be a completely different world if we had a history of movies of black and Asian characters killing white people. That doesn't sound racist to anybody but me. Plus, those movies do exist. He didn't think this through at all, did he? Look, I get it. Even as a- You got one of your white friends to lip sync your words? To play into the white guilt portion? <laughs> this is literally a minute worth of social justice. Oh, feel sorry for me. And if you won't listen to me, an Asian man, listen to my white friend say the exact lip sync the words that are coming out of my mouth. I, I don't want to be on this planet anymore. As a mixed race Asian American, I'm a little tired of all these complaints about the representation of minorities in Hollywood. But please support our Asian American Kung Fu film, The Paper Tigers, on Kickstarter. Do it for yourself. Do it for the children. Do it for yourself. Do it for the children. And that little comedy bit. Comedy bit at the end. No. No, 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 no. Um, let me see if I can find this Kickstarter. Give me one second. Okay, so here's the Kickstarter. Now, this is from last year. So, um, a kung fu indie film about three guys who are one kick away from pulling their hamstrings. This one's for the underdogs. The underdogs, guys, because the minorities are the underdogs. <sighs> donate now. There's still a donate button. Okay, 120, 586 backers pledged 124,503. Last updated May 2020. How many were they going for? How much were they going for? Okay, so they're at their stretch goal now. So, 124,503 out of 110,000. Okay, so as much as I hate the promo for this, as much as I know for a fact it's manipulative and it's disgusting, good on them for getting their, their stretch goal. I don't like how they did it. I don't like the manipulation that they put towards it. But yes, good on them for reaching their stretch goal. Um, let's see. Support. Pledge one dollar or more. Email surprise. A thank you email and a surprise. What are you gonna send us pictures of your wiener? <laughs> That's what I think when I hear uh, email surprise. Um, December twenty eighteen is the expected delivery date. Fifteen or more. A shout out. You'll get a shout out on the film's social media accounts. Join our join our team in the biggest fight for our lives in the making of an independent action film not for the faint of heart okay if this is not for the faint of heart why were you using a five-year-old to promote a possibly not five-year-old friendly movie hmm 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 yeah this is seeming more and more suspect <sighs> okay $29, a digital poster. Receive a digital poster featuring the art of world-renowned artist Jing... 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 I know that's not how you say his name, but I don't know how to pronounce it. Plus a shout-out from the previous level. Pledge $30 or more. See, if I'm pledging $29, I would expect a physical. Exclusive Bruce Lee print by Jerry Ma. Okay, so you do know about Bruce... Okay, okay. So so why are you doing this? Like, like, I don't know. Oh, that's right. It was the other video that I reviewed that I didn't know about Bruce Lee. Um, let's see. What else? What else? $49. A digital screener. Watch the movie in your own home. We'll send you a digital screener of The Paper Tigers upon wide release, plus everything from the previous levels. Okay. $99. A t-shirt plus a digital screener. <gasps> we get a t-shirt? A crummy t-shirt for our $99? Wow! A whole t-shirt! Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. 
That's the most expensive t-shirt in the world. Okay. $99 plus the digital screener. $49. So let's see. If we're doing $99, that's literally, you're charging us. You're charging us roughly $50 for a t-shirt. A t-shirt. What the heck? Okay. $499. A thank you credit and you can be an extra. Oh, goody. Oh, goody. You will be thanked in our official screen credits if you would like to be. In the cast, join us on set as a background extra during the shoot in Seattle, plus everything from the previous. Okay. 749. A rap party. Get invited to a rap party after we finish shooting in Seattle with the cast and crew. Photo ops with the team. Travel costs not included. Yep, your travel costs aren't included in that four hundred and ninety nine dollars. You have to pay for your own travel. But hey, it's a possibility. It's a possibility you could get into this thing. You just have to pay your own way. So if you live halfway across the country, oh, sorry, we're not going to pay for your ticket. Oh, gosh. $999, premier industry screening plus after party. Bask in the glory of, bask in the glory at one of our premier industry screenings in select c cities. See the movie on the big screen with crowd producers will buy you drinks at the after party and celebrate helping us get to it. Everything plus Everything plus previous levels. And again, travel costs not included. So we're going to pay you close to $1,000 and you're not even going to pay for a train ticket, a plane ticket, or even a bus ticket? That just seems like a freaking ripoff. $2,499 or more. Ever want to see how an action film comes to life? Hang out with us during the shoot and have lunch with the cast and crew in Seattle for your one-day set visit. Plus, get exclusive uh, exclusive access. Okay, so travel costs not included. So we get to pay you the illustrious privilege of hanging out with your cast for $2,499. And you're not going to fork over money for a plane ticket? Why? Why would I pay you guys and then pay extra money to fly over there? <laughs> $6,499. Associate producers show commitment to our film as associate producer because teamwork makes the dream work. Includes IMDb associate producer credit, set visit, party screening, invite, and signed poster. Plus everything plus the previous levels. And of course, travel cost not included. So we get to pay you close to $7,000 and you're not going to pay for a $100 ticket. Bravo. You're sure making me want to back your film. <laughs> uh, and then it drops to $75. That's a weird way to do Kickstarter. Limited karaoke print by Bernard Chang. Okay, I don't really care about that. $150. Commission art. Okay. $150. Okay, you already did that. Okay, so basically, this is just... It's a garbage thing. It's a garbage thing. Like, you're going to ca cause us to pay $6,000 to you, and then you're not even going to pay for a ticket. You know? Not only are you using white guilt manipulation tactics, you're using your five-year-old kid and all this other nonsense, but then you expect us to pay you thousands upon thousands of dollars, and then you're not going to pay for a plane ticket. I guess you're like, well, they're rich enough to pay $6,000. They, they can obviously pay for a plane ticket. Screw you. <sighs> Guys, this video's gone on long enough. I'm going to go lay down, play some Animal Crossing, and get ripped off. By Tom Nook. Hey everyone, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you liked what you saw, please hit the subscribe button. There should be a couple videos on the screen to check out if you feel like it. This is Gabe from Happy Blobfish Productions signing off, saying take care and God bless.